Duskmon might just have been the hardest pass for me due to the art. I really do not like it. But having seen a shit ton of cards spoiled, I believe that the power curve on this set might just draw me in in the end. Before going into some of those really powerful cards in Duskmon, of course, being a new set also comes with new mechanics. And we have seen three new mechanics so far. The first one is Delirium. Delirium is a triggered effect that takes place if you fulfill a specific requirement. And the requirement on the Delirium card is that you need to have four or more different card types in your graveyard. Different cards will have different effects, but the requirement is the same for Delirium. The mechanic Eerie is really on flavor for Dustmorn because it's very eerie this set. The Eerie mechanic triggers every time an enchantment enters the battlefield or every time you open a locked door. This mechanic can trigger multiple times and the more times you trigger it, the more powerful the effect is going to be. And having mentioned doors, we are also going to brush up on the last mechanic because that mechanic is the mechanic doors. We love engaging with you guys down in the comment section. So do let us know which card is your favorite out of one spoiled so far, or maybe you have a favorite new mechanic. Let us know down in the comment section. Doors are split cards in the set of Duskborn and they are enchantments. So when you cast them, the left side of the enchantment is going to take effect on the battlefield. Then if you pay the cost on the right side, this effect is also going to take place and you're going to open the door to that side of the room. Opening a door is going to interact with a lot of different cards in Duskmorn, procking different effects and triggers. We know historically that split cards like the door cards have been really powerful in Magic the Gathering. And I think that these doors are also going to be some sort of the cards in the set of Duskmorn. It is no secret that we weren't the biggest fans of this set, but we have seen some truly powerful and really cool cards, and even some in both common and uncommon rarities, and that is really nice to see. So let's check out some of these truly epic cards in Duskmorn. A really powerful card is Ethereal Armor. We also saw this card recently in the set of Wilds of Eldrain, but another reprint is quite nice, especially because the focus on enchantments makes this extra powerful, especially in the context of Dustmoor. Next up is the card Ghostly Keybearer. It's an uncommon card and it's a 3-3 flyer for 4 CMC. That in itself is not great, but it has a triggered ability. Every time this creature deals combat damage, you get to open a door. And we have seen some really powerful doors and that's a very powerful effect. So I think this card is going to see a lot of play. All in all, Ghostly Keybearer is an evasive creature with a great payoff when it deals damage. Next card is Inquisitive Glimmer. It is an enchantment creature with a 2-3 body and it reduces both enchantment cost and unlock dog cost by one. Inquisitive Glimmer is a blue-white creature and it would seem like this specific color pairing with Asaurus is the one that is going to interact the most with enchantments in the set. It's a really nice card, it's a really powerful card and we really like this one. Some other really interesting cards in the set of Duskmorn are actually common cards. And I'm of course speaking about the 13 live lands. These lands come in 10 different variants and they are covered of both the enemy and ally color pairings. Right now in standard, having lands that do not come into play tapped if any player have 13 or less life might not be that good. But we are seeing some utility for these lands of course outside of standard. For instance, you could combine these new lands with the Tree of Perdition or the Tree of Redemption to really take full effect of that 13 life mechanic and have true dual lands. And while you are at it, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this card, you can just look at it here, you are going to have a great win con playing with that 13 life number. If you're getting any value out of this video, please do smash the like button and consider becoming a subscriber. We are racing towards 3k subscribers this year and we would love for you to join our community. And with that being said, let's go for some real power. Some select rares and mythics from the set of Dusk. First up is the rare land cycle and these are called the Verge lands. They are absolutely powerful. They might actually just be some of the most powerful dual like land cards I've seen in recent sets in Magic the Gathering. They come into play and they can make a specific mana being blue, white, green, red and black. If we take the Gloom Lake Verge for instance, you can see that it comes into play and you can tap it for blue mana. But if you control an island or a swamp, you can actually also tap it for black mana. And that's really powerful. That means that these Verge lands are actually very close to being true dual lands as long as you play the specific mana at your first turn. So if you play for instance a swarm 
or an island on your turn 1, and you play in the Gloom Lake Verge on turn 2, it's going to come into play as a true dual land. So there you just have your underground sea. These new Verge lands resemble the Tainted lands from the set of Torment, but they are just way way better because they do not produce colorless mana when they come into play, and that is a huge benefit. Switching though, on the surface this is just your average run of the mill mana dork that can produce any color mana, but this is not all that this dork or doll actually can do, because every time you use the mana ability you get to place a nest counter on Twitching Doll. The next part of the card says that if you tap and sacrifice, you can get a 2-2 spider out of each of these nest counters on the card. So this is indeed a really versatile mana dork and a very cool one at that. It can get you some token generation and it's going to be really effective in the mid to late game. Next up is Hedge Shredder and Patchwork Beastie. Hedge Shredder allows you to play lands from your graveyard if these lands entered from your library and it comes into play with a mill ability in itself that might not be the greatest of cards but if you combine it with your patchwork beastie you are going to get a reliable mill each turn and that might net you some mana in the long run so this combination of two cards from Dustborn might just be really good especially because we have seen some of those landfall triggers and land decks in green recently I have been crying for great, great elves in magic for a very long time, and finally, I am getting one. Tywar the Pommeler is going to be an absolute beast from Duskmorn. He resembles a Suri Renegade leader quite a lot, because he can also do some indestructible ability, and he also pumps your little elf creatures. But he pumps them for the greatest power in play, so those plus X plus X can really get out of hand, especially if you combine him with, for instance, Timberwatch Elves. It's going to be an absolute auto-include in many an elf deck. Next up is a beast of an enchantment. It is Grievous Wounds. It's a 5 CMC casting cast and each time an opponent is dealt damage, they lose half their life. It has a great deal of combo potential, especially if you combine it with, say, Blood the Love of Alcazars from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. That means that that opponent is going to be dead, dead, dead in just one turn if only you could just do a little point of damage. And luckily there's a lot of cards in the set both in Dustmorn and in other sets that are going to do just that. And the last card is also going to be really powerful and it also takes its name from another really powerful card that actually was so powerful it got banned. I'm talking about the Meat Hook Massacre 2. You're probably not going to pay this for its X casting cost because that is quite expensive. But it doesn't need to be cast for X, you just need to get that card on the battlefield. And there it's going to wreak havoc on your opponent and also enable you to do fun shenanigans with recurring cards from your graveyard. On your side, it plays a lot like Athra's God of Passage, but against your opponents, it's going to be an absolute pain. Each time a creature they control dies, they are going to be paying free life. And if they don't, you are going to get that creature into play under your control. So all in all, this card is going to be rewarding you and it's going to force your opponents to do some really hard choices. So at first glance, this set was a pretty hard pass for us. There's a lot of modern art and we still stick to that. Having a windbreaker, sneakers and a tracksuit, it's just not our jam. But we have to say all of these really powerful and really also synergetic cards is definitely having us second guessing ourselves just a little. So time will tell if we are staying the course or maybe buckling under pressure to get some of those really powerful cards from Dustmorn. Speaking of staying the course, do you want to know what Wizards of the Coast have been planning for 2025? You can check out this video and that's going to steer you into the next year of magic. So I thank so all of you watching and an extra special thanks to all of you YouTube members and Patreon members. Your support means all the world to us and it is all of these cool guys and gals streaming down below here. We really appreciate your support and we're going to see you in the next video.